I get a lot of questions on knives. No, that's, that's all right. I deal with a lot of bushcraft and survival and homesteading and, you know, other people do outdoor activities. And they always want to know, what's the best knife? There is no best knife. The knives are going to be as different as people are. People are going to have preferences on what knives they want. People are going to have preferences on why they carry that knife. Your location and your uses for that knife are going to dictate what kind of knife you're going to have. I know a guy who goes out in the woods. He's an ultralight backpacker. He does not make fires. And the only knife that he carries with him is one of those razor blades with a snap-off blades on it. A very small one, too. Not even a big fat one, just a little thin one. The most things he cuts, a string and maybe a piece of cloth or a plastic bag. He stays on well-established trails in normal parks. He does not go out into the wild wilds or anything like that. And that knife suits his purpose. Whereas my friend Giuliano down in Brazil wouldn't dare go out into the woods without a larger blade. But if he decides he's going to go through the jungle area, He's going to take a machete. He wouldn't take his neck knife or even his, you know, his K-bar knife or BK2 or anything like that. He would take a larger knife to do what needed to be done. Different areas, different reasons for different blades. Same thing with guns. You know, different guns, different applications, stuff like that. No one blade is your cure-all, kill-all super blade. They don't make it. It's not out there. Depends on a lot of different circumstances and uses. Now, a lot of people ask me about splitting wood with a knife. Here's my philosophy and what I've been trained with a knife. And no, I don't use this one. This is just having to be the one in the kitchen, which is right over there. And I uh, decided to pull this out just to show you. When you would split wood with a knife, you would baton the knife down through the wood. Here's my problem with that and the reasons I don't do it. One, if this is my only cutting tool, which it's, I don't normally take out just a knife, I usually take a saw and a tomahawk with me when I go. I would not want to use my one and only you know, knife to split wood. The chances are too great, one in a million is too great for me, that I would damage that knife, and then I would be without the knife, and I would be forced to go abo, you know, making something out of stone or bone or another wood knife or something like that, instead of having my metal knife. Well, sure, I could snap it and have a partial knife. Okay, but the chances of damaging my blade by driving it into a hard piece of wood, or hitting a knot, or an old piece of fence, or a nail, or a bullet. I know people have cut down trees and found axe heads in a tree. The chance of actually hitting, you know, maybe a piece of chain that somebody in some past has thrown over the tree, and, you know, the house has burned down, and the land's gone back to whatever. <clears throat> too great. Too great a chance to damage the one cutting implement that I'm relying on. I won't baton it. I can use that knife for other things and for burning through wood like that I would either burn it in half, you know, burn, build a fire underneath the log and burn it away, or I would feed the end of the log in, or most of the time what I do is I gather up squaw wood, either standing dead wood or wood that's laying on the ground already and I burn it that way. So batoning my knife to me is a no-no. That's my philosophy. That's my ideas. The way I was taught, and I won't risk my life for that. So, they asked me about full tangs, partial tang. Well, this is a partial tang. It doesn't go all the way through. Okay, It stops up in here. It doesn't go through the scallops down here. It doesn't come through the bottom of the knife. The different tangs that you will find are for different strengths of knives. And epoxy is pretty good nowadays. And having a rat tail, if you don't know what a rat tail is, you can look that up. A rat tail tang and a knife. Many different knives out there. K-bars, Mora's, a few others use the rat tail. But and the stress on a knife is right here. You're going to have your handle. 
and you're going to be cutting. You're going to be pushing down on this end and, and face it. You're going to be using this as a lever. You're going to lever this knife when you're cutting and doing other things. Whether you're slicing this way or up and down this way or cutting long ways, you're still putting pressure down on the blade, which is causing pressure here, up through the handle. Well, that'll be your weak point. A lot of times when a knife breaks, breaks here at the weak point. Oh, well, sure, you may chip the blade or crack something off or snap this sideways or whatever else, but when the knife really fails and breaks, it's usually up here where the blade goes into the handle. That's usually where that knife gives out. It cracks in here, has other problems in here, and goes away. Depends on how you use your knife, what you use your knife for. So I'm not going to tell you that a full tang knife is a whole lot better than a rat tail knife because I've got a more number one that's older than some of my viewers. Never had a problem out of it. But I don't mistreat that blade and I know where that tang is and I remember that when I use it. Okay, I can't take this knife and beat the bejesus out of it because it's got that rat tail tang in there. Whereas if I had a knife that had a full tang in it, I might be a little more inclined to do a little heavier, harder work with it. My own thoughts, my own opinion. Uh, yours may differ. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm not saying that I'm right. I'm just saying it's different of opinion. Now, people say, oh, the thicker the knives, Rich, you need to think that we can baton through the things with those because the knives' blades are thicker. Well, sure, they have thicker spines nowadays. I mean, I've had a BK2, which is like a quarter-inch thick steel. Very heavy knife. But, let's think about this. That knife on the back is a quarter inch thick. How thick is it on the blade where you're cutting with? I bet that knife at the blade, what you're cutting with, is no thicker than the blade that I'm cutting with. doesn't matter how thin my knife is. It matters about the part that I'm cutting on right down here. So if that BK2's edge dolls out, bends over, twists, curls, you just have to resharpen it, reshape it again. Same as I would with this knife or with a thinner blade knife. Wouldn't matter. With a flint knife, you just chip off more. Why would you do that to your knife? You're basically taking a chance of damaging your blade. They all come down to cutting. Now, people say you need a 6-inch knife, an 8-inch knife. I usually carry about a 4-inch knife. I don't carry this, of course. It's from the kitchen. But... Most of the cutting I do is no bigger around than my finger. I make tent pegs. Okay? Put anything to put my tarp up with. Maybe uh, make some feather sticks. Even if I've got a tree. Okay? I'm going to I'll use this as a tree limb. And if I'm going to shave off that tree limb, I'm only able to touch a small amount at the time that I'm shaving on. I'm not cutting a tree limb this way. We shave it off or trim it off. Okay, So I'm only touching what? Contact, maybe a quarter to a half inch of actual contact with whatever we're cutting. If you've got a bigger stick, you're going to cut over here, and you're going to move it, you're going to cut over here, and you're going to move it, and you're going to cut over this way. You're not going to try and hack through and push all that with a regular knife. Now if you had a draw blade, you can do more. Something like that. Well, you're normally not going to do that with your one and only blade. You're not going to be scraping toward trying to take big wide pieces of wood away or anything like that. Grasses will dull a knife very quickly. Fibrous material like grass and uh, you know, there's all kinds of different weeds out there, vines, cattails, all the plant matter will dull a knife very quickly because there's a lot of fibers to cut through. And using a knife to cut through those will dull it very quickly. So once you've got your knife, whatever you're going to take out there and enjoy out in the woods, and it works for your purpose, make sure you take a way to sharpen it. Even if, like my friend uses and just snaps off and gets a different blade, he's still got a sharp blade. So having some way or means to sharpen your knife while you're out there is very important also. So, what's the best knife? I said it a couple years ago. 
the knife that you're most comfortable with, the knife that you can handle well, and the knife that you are proficient with, feel safe with, and uh, fits in your budget. No sense in going out for a $300 knife if you can only afford a $10 more. So, go out there, have some fun, be careful. Watch out, temperatures are changing now, so watch your body core temperature. Maybe we'll talk about shelter next. I'll catch you on the next one.